here. This is video two in the auger series. And um, again, we're starting the series from the basics, right? What is auger? Uh, what are auger plates? What are liquid cultures? What do you use them for? You know, what are your recipes? So here in video two, I'm gonna be covering a bunch of recipes. I'm gonna to try to keep this short because a lot of this information is going to just be sort of permutations on a very basic recipe. But first, let's back up. In the first video, I didn't necessarily show you what we're talking about. This is an auger plate. As you can see, it's got this nutrition right here. This is the auger auger powder. And in this case, this is sorghum syrup auger. And you can see that I inoculated this with a transfer from another auger plate of a blue oyster. You can see that it's all nicely grown out. Same thing, different recipe. Here's another one. You can see it's all beautifully striated out. You can see all these great growth sectors. You can see that this is black, right? What this is, is that this is sorghum auger, just like this, but with just a couple of grams of charcoal added. Pretty cool. So, that's auger plates. Now the key thing to remember is that the only difference between auger plates and a liquid culture is that one of these has auger auger powder in it. If you added auger auger powder to your LC recipe, more than likely you'd get a solid mass of nutrition of jelly. It's great. Cool. So, let's recap. Fungi, in their germination state as spores, where spores are inert, then they have to germinate and mate and grow out. Um, and in other states where you're doing tissue transfers, where you're doing liquid culture inoculations, and everything else like that, they are looking for two things. They're looking for carbon and nitrogen. Right? They want carbon to eat, because that's their job, and they want nitrogen for the energy to break down that carbon. Right? Now that means wood, composted materials, and other organics. Our very basic auger recipe, just to recap, is one liter distilled, if you can, water. 15 grams auger auger powder and then 20 grams of nutrition. Right? That's this right here gives you infinite possibilities. Right? Just this mix. Right? So that's our basic recipe. And at the end of the first video, I covered the eponymous malt extract auger recipe. So, I'm gonna shorten this so I can get some space back on the whiteboard. I'll start over here. So, one liter water, 15 grams auger auger, um, 20 grams nutrition, right? That's your basic recipe. Malt extract auger is 15 grams, so I'll do MEA. MEA, 15 grams auger, powder, and then 20 grams light malt extract, LME. That's that powder that you can find at brew stores, Amazon, etc. It's light malt extract. It's powder usually, good stuff. It's got what fungi crave. Arms. So, malt extract auger is just one liter of water to 15 grams auger auger powder and 20 grams LME. So, what what can we change here? Well, first, let's uh, look at malt extract. So, we covered in the last video low nutrition versus high nutrition mixes, right? Low nutrition versus high nutrition mixes will change the growth rate of the fungus and other possible contaminants, right? So if you add 
five more grams of auger and lower the 20 grams of LME to 15, you get a low nutrient mix. This will help contaminants not grow as quickly. The mycelium will still mycelate so you can get clean transfer samples. So we'll say this is high nutrition and then this is low, right? Again, it's still in the A, but all we're doing is we're changing 20 grams of auger, 15 grams LME. Right? Perfect. Now, let's say you know for a fact that you've got a highly contaminated sample or you're trying to do isolation of bacterial populations for the fungus and things like that. You've probably heard of antibiotic auger. Now, antibiotic auger can come in several forms, right? At its very base, you can go and get laboratory antibiotics, mix it into your auger, and that auger becomes antibiotic. Now, antibiotics, penicillium and others, um, they have a drawback in that you can actually build, or you can actually accidentally create antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria, diseases, and things like that. That's where we get strepto uh, streptococcus and other things like that, right? These viruses and bacteria that we can't fight the infections off of. So you should use truly antibiotic auger extremely sparingly in your laboratory. There are other options, however. And what's cool is that they're infinitely cheaper than going and buying antibiotic powder. So, let's go ahead and erase the high and low nutrition, and let's only focus on this, 15 and 20. Let's say I wanted to create um, that carbon plate that I showed you, this black one. Why did I do that? By adding activated hardwood charcoal, carbon, pure carbon, right? This is literally pure tree flesh, burnt, right? It's charcoal. Um, that activated carbon, when added to the auger powder, has the same rough net effect as antibiotics and actually lowering your nutrition. In other words, pure carbon, fungi will eat pure carbon. Fungi can grow on hydrocarbons, crude oil, coal, things like that. That is their job. However, black mold, trichoderma, lipstick mold, and other things really don't like pure carbon because they ain't their gene. So by adding a little bit of charcoal to your auger mix, you can actually make it more disease resistant or more contamination resistant, which would allow you to get very contaminated samples cleaned up and isolated. So, again, I don't use charcoal auger an extreme amount. Right now I'm doing that because I'm doing a massive wild library cleanup. And so I have to clean everything up. Some of the stuff's been sitting in the refrigerator for a year, right? So I'm gonna use slightly antibiotic with charcoal fodder to clean those up. What that recipe becomes is MEA, I'm gonna do dash C for carbon, we're going to take 15 grams of auger powder. We're going to take 20 grams of LME. 20 grams of LME. And we're going to add four grams, four grams of carbon powder. Same deal. You take that, put it in a one liter temperature safe glass uh, vessel, jar, bottle, what have you. And you sterilize 20 minutes at 15 PSI, 16 PSI if you're at elevation above 10,000 feet, like Colorado. Boom, boom. Now, if you've watched video one and you're seeing this, what you're seeing is that, what I mentioned before, there is a very basic recipe for everything we do as mycologists. And basically everything else is derived from these core recipes and these core ideas. So with this basic auger recipe, the sky's the limit. You can add 
tons of things, you can change nutrition sources, right? Why might you do that? Some fungi like different nutrition sources. Some of them like dung, some of them like manure, some of them like a lot of carbon, some of them like more lignin, some of them like certain types of grains, right? But more importantly, choosing a nutrition source for your auger plates and your LC allows you to train your fungi. Now, if you go back to basic fungal biology, fungi operate by decaying or just decomposing all of the organic matter around them. They do this with exoenzymes or an enzyme stomach where they go around and they emit acids and all sorts of cool things to break down the material around them to unlock the nutrition that they want and then they absorb it through their cell walls. Cool, right? Um, all of that said, it's like, I totally lost that train of thought. I'm going to have to edit that. So, edit point now. One, two, three. Okay. So, this basic core permutation of this recipe allows us to do a lot of things. And so that pre-training of your fungus, right, you can take and say your substrate has worm castings in it. You could add four grams of worm castings to this mix. And what would happen is once your spores germinate and they grow onto that, they will memorize the exoenzymes that they used to decompose that nutrition. Which means when you take that culture, that fungus, and you move it to a substrate or something else that has that nitrogen source in it, that manure or that worm casting, the fungus is gonna take off like a rocket, right? It's just gonna fly through that because it has been trained to understand that nutrition. So that brings us to different recipes, right? You don't have to use malt extract, right? You actually don't have to specialize your recipe, right? Because at the end of the day, if you can make an auger plate that just has the right nutrition, it doesn't really matter what that nutrition is, the fungus will take off and you can still use it. So what we're talking about is growth optimization and training. That's why you would want to change your mixes. Also, to prevent uh, genetic degradation. Because if you transfer from plate one to plate 200 without changing the nutrition source, the fungus will shut down, right? It may never fruit again, it may never colonize again. Um, basically, the fungus gets bored and goes inert. So you have to change your nutrition sources every 10, 20 transfers, right? And that's a different video entirely. So, that's your basic recipe. Let's talk about another antibiotic option. Good old hydrogen peroxide, 3%. See that brown bottle? You remember this. If you haven't hurt yourself as an adult, I feel bad for you, but if you remember your childhood, you should have used a lot of this. Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is antibiotic. That's right. Uh, so hydrogen peroxide is an antibiotic, you know, chemical, and it's got some pretty cool properties in that it's not going to hurt human or you know animal flesh, right? It's not going to break down the stuff inside of us, which is why it's really good for surgeries and cleaning wounds and things like that. Now remember back to fungal biology. We split from fungi before plants. We share more RNA, more DNA, and more like cell structure with fungi, right, than we do with plants. And so what's nice is that this hydrogen peroxide isn't going to hurt mycelium, right? It's not going to hurt the fungus itself. What it will kill off is the bacteria, contaminants, molds, trichoderma, and things like that. That can block your fungus from growing. So. For this next recipe, we're gonna swap out this hardwood powder with plain old H2O2, right? Let me blow your mind. We're gonna put all this MEA dash H for H2O2. 15 grams auger, uh, 20 grams LME, one liter water, and then 
four grams peroxide. Right. Now you can actually either lower the amount of water from one liter to like 999.5, or um, you can increase the amount of dry mix to make up for that moisture, right? So you can add a couple more grams of water, LME, et cetera, right? But four grams of additional moisture shouldn't throw the mix off that much. Same sterilization time, boom, Bob Jonkel, you now have your basic malt extract, which is gonna be your bread and butter. Carbon plates for cleanup, if you can get access to nice, good carbon powder. My German peroxide, which can go down to the Walgreens or CVS or Target, or hell, the local gas station, get a bottle of it. That's malt extract and actually making antibiotic auto. In the next video, we're going to talk about nutrition sources, and we'll probably touch on liquid cultures. Like I keep stressing, a liquid culture is just your basic auger mix inoculated with a fungus and no auger auger powder so it doesn't become solid. This is a white morel. So, next video I'll walk you through all of that. Hope you're enjoying the series so far. I'll be right back.